I got wasted. I got wasted <laughs> from the last video. If you've seen it, I went to Nightmare on Chicago Street, a town block party. I got wasted. I was supposed to come home and film a story time with my costume on, but I was so wasted to the point where I had to throw up and knock the fuck out. I mixed my drinks. So irresponsible. It is what it is. So I apologize, you will not be getting a story time from me on Halloween. But we're gonna go ahead and move forward and we're gonna watch a video today. And thank you to Diamond Dynasty, The Diamond Life. She promoted my channel on her video. So I really appreciate it, girl. I already got a lot of uh, subscribers subscribing to my channel. So if that's one of you, thank you guys so much for subscribing and stay tuned because, man, I be reacting. And I'm blunt and I'm honest and I'm truthful with my opinion. You might like it, you might not. I don't know, but always comment below and let me know yours because I really want to know. So we're going to go ahead and watch this video. This video is focused on Aaron Carter. That guy is loose with this and with this. He's either trolling or flat out lying or he might be actually telling the truth in his stories or he's strung out on drugs and alcohol. I don't know. I ain't judging, but we are gonna watch this video. It's called Watch Aaron Carter Lie to You Nonstop, Body Language Secrets. This video is by Derek Van Schock. Never heard of him, never seen his videos, but this title stuck out to me and I wanna watch it. So watch it with me, you guys. It's Aaron Carter. Thank you so much. My brother, you know, joining the Backstreet Boys and I kind of just followed suit and wanted to look up to my brother. I don't know no as boy with a neck tat. I, 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 I think that's face tat. You know, you know what? I don't even need a face tat. The next day. Why did you get a massive face tattoo? Yeah. Then he put this face tattoo on. That face tattoo was supposedly inspired by Rihanna, okay? It's a Medusa face on his face. A Medusa face on his face. I don't, I don't know what that means. Yeah, and immediately that reminded me of Brittany when she shaved her head. It's the same behavior, same probably kind of condition he's in as she was then. Yes, yeah, it's like that idea got planted in Aaron's mind that face tattoo equals tough, so he got a face tattoo. But the scary thing is, is that that tattoo artist said Aaron originally wanted a tattoo to cover the whole front of his face, That's but crazy. he was able to talk him out of it. That's of course, crazy. a subconscious body language signal of someone wanting to cover their entire front of their face with a tattoo is wanting to permanently wear a mask and hide. Do you feel mentally stable right now? Like, I mean, overall? I cannot turn a question around. Uh, by the way, I'm a, I'm, I don't agree with that about it's kind of putting on a mask and hiding. I don't think he did it for that reason. I, and I think it's just another reason to have more people talk about him and to just not care. He might be on the verge of being even suicidal. You know, you have to do some drastic changes to your body like that. Permanent changes on your face. Something's up with this guy. Brown, are you? When Aaron is asked that, did you notice that he deflects it back to Mike, the interviewer? Has anyone ever done that to you? Typically, they're deflecting and thereby diverting so they don't have to answer what you just asked them. I say typically because this type of deflecting can also be a power play in a confrontational debate. But this is just a chill interview. So Aaron doesn't want to answer that question for obvious reasons. Now watch this next part closely. See if you can pick out any body language or clues that seem to reveal the truth. My brother filed a restraining order 45 days after, uh, you know, he <clears throat> uh, allegedly heard that I want to come stab his wife and unborn child. Aaron is basically saying that his brother is making it all up. But did you pick up on anything? First, he was just about to slip and say he heard but then quickly covers it up with an allegedly hurt. My brother filed a restraining order 45 days after, uh, you know, he heard. Second, notice the mocking quotation marks he uses. Uh, allegedly heard that I want to- Yeah, he puts them on the- <laughs> Allegedly. And then gives open palms on the heard part. So I didn't even catch that, did you? Did y'all catch that? I didn't. But it's funny, because usually you would put quotations on something that is so-and-so, or so is so-called, like so-called whatever, and he put that on allegedly, so. Okay, interesting. So he actually seems to be mocking the allegedly part and honest about the heard part. It was never even said. Why is he saying that? All of his rape victims are all coming out and I have all the police reports and I have all the cover-ups. Both your older brother and your twin sister have 
file a restraining order against you because no, like there's no merit they're, they're turning gone. it around on me trying to make me look like i'm the crazy one feeling a little bit like it's aaron against the world because yeah. of and it still is and tried to set me up have me violate my restraining order ah. you can't play victim all the time you can't play victim all the time when we're going through things we're always gonna say well it's fuck that fuck them haters they're all against me anyways right you you just think that the world is against you it's because you're going through things and you just feel like no one's by your side. No one's there to listen to you or you have nobody to vent to or nobody to turn to when you're going through something. It doesn't necessarily mean the whole world's against you. Some people are living their lives and they don't even care what you're doing. Do your thing, okay? And that's, Aaron Carter is one of them. He just, he's just playing victim right now. I endured abuse. When I was 10 to 13 years old, I was molested and raped by my sister who died from overdose, Leslie. Leslie's yeah. the one that got me into huffing. I got punched in the jaw by my drummer and he broke my jaw in three places. Boom, he sucked the punches me. And he's always abused me all my life. I actually wrote that song about my ex-girlfriend, really? Lena, who assaulted me, hit me, and <laughs> I got a restraining order against her. My dad, I'm like, hey. Listen. All these things sound so fake, so unrealistic or exaggerated, but it could be true. It could be true. What do you think? What do you think about all his stories? Comment below. Let me know. 18th birthday, put a 44 magnet next to my right ear and shot next to the ground. And if you don't write this check for me, next one you know it's gone. I can't hear out of my right ear. <laughs> Sony Records and Steve Zapp ripped me off and I'm suing them. My twin sister has a restraining order against me here because they're gonna use everything they can against me to try to make me look like I'm crazy, bro. So they get me locked up. I already had surrendered my firearm. She stole $3,000 from me. It is a serial rapist. He abused me my whole life. The reason why I have a hiatal hernia and a stomach condition today is because he used to make me drink, force me to drink alcohol. From it's crazy because if all of his allegations is untrue, it, that is so wrong on so many levels. That's your brother. That's your sister. That's your father. That's your ex-girlfriend. These are all people that love and care about you in some way. And you're accusing them of these evil, horrific things. And if it's not true, man, boy, you need to get checked. You need to, I don't know. From the age of like 11 to 15. No, you're 18 years old. That's What's that legal to drink? I am an What's adult. What's the legal age to drink? I'm an adult at our home. In this country, what's the legal age to drink? I'm an adult. You're in my home. Area. They don't know my identity. I can identify with myself. My parents got divorced when I was 15. When I was 15, I started dealing cocaine and ecstasy. Seems like there's such an abundance of allegations towards wait, wait. everybody that you've almost ever had anything to do with, and that makes what me a little her? bit skeptical. Well, I'm a mama's boy. That's why my family hates me. It's because my mom became my manager and was by my side the whole time. You think your mother stole money from you? I think she did. And when I came back to my dad, I didn't have a dime. Jane ceased to be Aaron's manager. Jane! And her little prince of pop wanted nothing to do with her. I'm killing the game. Now it starts acting a little cocky. Relationships change though. You could have a bad relationship when you were younger with one of your parents, but then become close like best friends when you're older. We have a lot more on his cockiness coming up, but take notice of Aaron's personal bodyguard's body language now. Um, no, what what happened in this is 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 I I, I, I released this like I sent this September. 4th. He smiles and laughs with someone else off camera, like here he goes again, <laughs> and then closes his eyes when he looks up and away in amazement. Remember, this guy has been around Aaron a lot more than most. Anything that I touch is the biggest. Really? Watch this be your biggest interview. Because I'm smart as f <laughs> I'm not completely f humble. I'm not completely, f you know, not uh, narcissistic. I, I am a little bit. And I deserve that. I've earned that. I drowned when I was four years old. You know what I think it is? Why he's uh, accusing all these people of these, of these horrible things? They did him wrong in some way. And he is so sensitive, extremely sensitive, so he takes it as an extreme betrayal. And because of that, his defense mechanism is accusing them of something horrible to make them feel what he's feeling. Because to him, it's like such extreme hurt. He wants them to feel that. I don't know. And I was dead for three days. Wait, what? And I came back to life. For three days you were dead? Yeah. My guy. And then I came back. <laughs> it was a little long to be dead. I'm very rich. Right. Yeah, he's very that? powerful and very rich. I'm too powerful. I'm the biggest thing there is right now. Uh -huh. You can't deny it. Google me then. Come on, bring it. I have good My mind, I got an IQ of 158. You're lying. That's <laughs> genius level. I'm That's not genius lying. level. I'm not lying. That's insane. That's 90. 
9.99. You're basically the smartest person ever. Pretty much. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Okay. I don't believe it. But I like to think I like to think otherwise too, okay? What if he is a genius? Look at Albert Einstein. Everyone thought he was slow, okay? He he ended up being a genius. People who are constantly misunderstood end up being the most genius person that just thinks outside the box and they speak of things that no one's ever heard of. So it sounds a little bit confusing and they look crazy. What if he ain't lying? What if he ain't lying? <laughs> okay, I think, I think he's lying. I think he's lying. Don't question my IQ again. IQ? You questioned it? Did you? I don't no, think I've ever guessed your IQ. No, you didn't question it. It was Logan that did that. Wow. <sighs> Pretty much. Am I dating? Yeah. I'm, I'm dating. Yeah. What do you think? Was Aaron lying? Instead of going through the trouble of breaking down his body language, why don't we just look at his bodyguard again to find out the truth? <laughs> Security guards shaking his head no. <laughs> Oh, so you're not supposed to say his name? One. <laughs> I'm a rabbit. Two. Yes, I am. Three. Why not? Four. Do you see the look on his bodyguard's face when he said that? He seems to know what's really going on and seems to be frustrated with Aaron's constant lies and delusions. What you Second degree black belt jujitsu. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, we got trained together, man. I'm trying to get back into it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's good. This guy's a habitual liar. Constantly, he believes his own lies. The most crazy thing about this, he actually is in full detail with his lies and he's so quick with them. No. What do you think, was that a lie? Well, actually, we have a photo, but it's just missing one small little thing. <laughs> the black do you belt. think he was actually truthful? Okay, seriously. <laughs> Notice how his eyes widened to overcompensate for what he seemed to believe was the typical intensity of someone who knows that fighting skill. Mm -hmm. Second degree black belt jujitsu. When Adam 22 said he also has done some of that, Aaron seemed to feel that Adam could see right through him, so in defense, notice he quickly diverts his eyes and closes them while sucking in his lips, which signals reclusiveness on this topic. Really? Yes. Whoa, we gotta train together, man. I'm trying to get back into it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's good enough. So also notice, Aaron doesn't ask Adam anything about this rare commonality, but instead says something else that's outrageous to divert the topic. Watch. And I'm also studying for the bar exam right now. I got my real estate license. <laughs> at this point, Adam 22 <laughs> is squinting at Aaron in confusion and disbelief, but Aaron just got started. Let's keep watching. I'm working on my clothing around right now. I manage myself. I'm my own publicist. I negotiate my own contracts. I file my own taxes. I mix, master, and engineer everything. I'm opening up my own dispensary. I made $4.9 million off of real estate this year, and I'm building 25 homes there right now. I if he has that much money, why isn't he hiring anybody to do all these jobs that supposedly he's doing himself? I also do jewelry on the side. I do over 250 shows a year. I filed a bankruptcy. I'm studying for the bar exam. Well, guess what I did? I litigated my own case. I made this piece. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You, you made that piece on your neck? Yes. I got white gold, 14 karat gold, all diamonds. Roughly about, say about maybe 60 or 70 karats of diamonds here. Damn, oh, lied. Up. My boy up here, look at all that. That's what I love. I love when these YouTubers come up with facts and evidence and to show proof of the debate that they're trying to put forward to the audience. And I, I gotta respect it, man. Look at this. This is proof. He didn't do this. He didn't do it. He didn't make that. Drip. And you're gonna test the diamonds right now? For some reason, Aaron diamond testing or something related to it seems to be triggering our bodyguard friend here. Watch him again. And you're gonna test the diamonds right now? Yeah. <laughs> what, what does that mean? It's going like halfway up. Yeah, it's really, it's a little bit, man. I don't know if I'm a. All right, let's see this. Hold nah, I mean, I, I don't have to test the impulsive now. chain. Aaron Garter couldn't get the stones on his apparent pawn shop chain to register as diamonds, so he subtly swaps over to testing Logan Paul's impulsive chain. And uh, yeah, watch what happens. Damn. Uh, oh! oh! <laughs> it's off the charts! Logan and Mike were shocked that the chain they assumed was fake had real diamonds because it was just given to Logan. Wow! We got a real diamond chain! Yeah, we so did that, by the way. So this is, uh, this is probably about three ounces of gold. Solid gold. 
Um, it looks like it's about 18 carats. Aaron, of course, knows all this stuff by just touching and looking at the piece. Because, well, if you recall... I also do jewelry on the side. I'll change it. Are you serious? Right now. You're lying. <laughs> Take it. Take it. You're giving me this? Do we have a deal? Yeah, we got a deal. <laughs> all white gold. There's 50 carats. 50 carats of BBS shoes. This is the These, coolest thing ever, and then, dude. And then this 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 chain is is it's probably you got about 80, 85 carats of diamonds around your neck right now. You're just giving away things, huh? Because Michael gave away things. Michael. I would take that necklace too. I would take it because it's free. I don't care if it's from a pawn shop. It's free. It was given to me, even tied up behind my neck and everything by the person. And it was from a celebrity, and Aaron Carter, he's like the most, um, he's the most controversial guy right now, I feel like, other than Austin from the Ace Family. <laughs> but why not? Well, Jackson gave me his jacket, so I always like to give. Who cares if it's from the pawn shop? Impulsive. Is it Impulsive who made this chain? One week later. So it turns out, by the way, this one is uh, real. Well, the diamond is. The diamonds on the diamond is real. But the chain didn't have real diamonds. And who knows if the actual diamonds in that pendant are truly BBS2 quality. <laughs> the impulsive chain was worth about uh, $15,000. We lost 10K in, in a trade. It's yours. I'm not an Indian giver. Whoa, that's racist, but also... I didn't even see that part. I saw that interview with Logan Paul, but I didn't see the next day to where they actually got it tested. Well, basically, Aaron robbed his ass. He pretty much stole $10,000 from Logan Paul. And I saw this interview, too, um, with No Jumper. He also gave him a chain. See what happens there. Oh, I hear you. No, it's not racist because I'm Native American. Oh, I'm that's Native. Sorry. Yes, I'm, yeah, Native. Well, we were having that conversation. Black, black. Black. Can anyone possibly lie any worse than that? No, it's not racist because I'm Native American. Oh, I'm Native. Sorry. Yes, I'm, yeah, Native. Well, we were having that conversation Black and I feel Shift the eyes, looking in and away from the camera, sudden stutter, repeating the lie to overcompensate for his known falsehood. It's almost like he wanted the attention of getting caught in the lie. Hey, are you religious? I am, yes. Uh, Christian. Catholic. Have you always been? Yes. That's why I have him right here. My cross. I'm a Southern Baptist. Uh, and that's how I live my life. Now, here's the extensive list of everything Aaron says he's dealing Damn. with in his life. I watched the first Trade Center get hit by the first wow. plane. Fear from flying came from that. I endured abuse. We need disorder of stigma in my right eye. Bankruptcy two years ago. Mental abuse, body shit. I can't hear out of my right ear. Acid reflux, hyaluronic hernia. I was diagnosed at 19 with the condition of a 90 year old man. I have a fractured knee. Hey, there's a word for this. There's a word for people like him. Like, have you heard of people who actually, you know, want sympathy from people all the time? So they fake their illnesses, they fake that they have cancer. They just want the attention. There's a word for it. If you know what that word is, comment below. And if he knows, I hope he lets us know. Yeah, I have high arches from cancer. He probably has Extreme that. Anxiety. I wake up with panic attacks, chest pains, hyperactive thyroidism, That's cancer, crazy. Pain, all the above. I look like I have like, HIV or AIDS, do I? Aaron gets every test done under the sun, but guess what he has? Nothing. Well, here are the results. Your HIV test is negative. Even though your tests are normal, in my opinion, you're not healthy. That's right. Not None of the major illnesses he was concerned he had. He didn't have any of them. Two years later, he comes back to the doctor's TV show and uh, watch this. I suffer from multiple personality disorders, schizophrenia, acute anxiety, a manic depressive. Run. Aaron also points out that even though he's been through extensive therapy, he's never been diagnosed bipolar or schizophrenic, even though he said he'd been diagnosed with the disorders on the doctors. And this is my reality. Oh my god. Now here's all the things he says he's done and takes. This guy. He's stressing me out. He is stressing me out. I don't know what it is. Something's wrong with him. He's got something to be like this. Well, I'm high in fish oil. Puffing was what I was doing. Two packs a day. Clonopin, oxycodone, gabapentin, hydroxyzine, trazodone, omazoprazole. When somebody has an addictive process already in their history, right. marijuana affects your brain in a very different way than somebody who actually has no problems. So, guess what's happening? What? I'm quitting smoking weed. Do you know why? You're gonna quit today? Yeah. 
And why? Because it affects my medications. Run meat later. I'm watching you on this doctor show and they're acting like the weed is such a big deal. Or is it Absolutely because you're not. I com I completely endorse this. I'm a world of stuff. And of course he just goes on and on about it. As we're noticing, it seems he's either so addicted he just can't stop or he's just so out of touch with reality that he doesn't fully understand what he's saying and doing. You know, what do you think? I have the results of your drug test here. I'm gonna tell you that Aaron tested positive for marijuana, extended opiates, benzodiazepines. During this part, Aaron finally starts to reveal a lot. Started when I was about 16. My sister Leslie, who passed away from an overdose, got me into it. Didn't really touch it until I was about 23, right after I did Dancing with the Stars. And I started going to Staples and Office Depot and different places, buying it with cash so it wouldn't be reported on receipts or anything like that. The last time you huffed? Was the last, uh, right before you guys put me in rehab. His name is Aaron Carter. He's a very heavy drug user, and he's inhaling computer duster, and he was doing it all night. And he was driving in his car at 3.30 in the morning and he was clearly intoxicated. Recently, he were on a show called The Doctor, which is off the air there. So you're... You know, is there any other tests we can do to prove that? Well, that's the doctor just asked Aaron if he's done with it. And instead of Aaron either confirming he's done with it, or maybe telling us his story of how he was able to kick that addiction, which is what we would expect, he goes right into challenging the doctor on his ability to test for it. And now as we continue, watch Aaron's body language. That's why huffing is such... I mean, he has his arms crossed and his foot is shaking. To complex. Notice how Aaron burst out in a big, gloating smile. But his foot begins to jiggle, which also indicates some nervousness as the doctor answers, because if Aaron's wrong... Sorry, I, I had to stop this video. The cops were at my door. Don't worry, I'm okay. I had to call the cops because when I was walking my dog, someone's dog broke loose from their backyard and started charging towards us. A boxer, okay? A boxer. He was literally like up to here to me, okay? He started running towards me and my dog. And I had, I was so nervous. All I could do was stand there and be like, no, no, bad boy. He stops, stares at me, and I said, uh uh uh, bad boy. He turns around and goes back to his backyard. I came home, dropped off my dog, went back to that house. Notice that the dogs weren't in the backyard anymore, back in their house. So I knocked on that door to let that neighbor know, like, listen, your dog is getting loose and it's not safe for that to happen, you know? He, they didn't answer the door, so I had to call the cops. So here they were. And it's so funny because this cop was like, I think I remember you. I'm like, what? What you mean? What you mean? Did you go to Nightmare on Chicago Street? Yeah. Were you the devil? Like, were you a devil? Did you have makeup on and all that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what did I do? Because I was wasted, yo. He's like, I, w I was with the other cops by the stage. Remember when, when Julian Jumpin' Perez and um, Tim Spinney Schomburg was DJing? I'm like, oh, yeah. I high-fived all the cops, yo. That's how drunk I was. That's how drunk and happy I was. I high-fived all the cops and we're like, yeah. I was making them dance a little bit. So that's funny and embarrassing at the same time. All right, let's get back to this video. And there is a test out there. <laughs> He'll be exposed. Keep in mind, too, Aaron coming back to the Doctor's TV show two years later after his first appearance in 2017 is supposed to be his moment to shine and show the world that he's doing so much better now. I really do think that you've come a long way Thank you. since two years ago when Thank we saw you. Thank you so much. I really I mean, you look it. completely different. <laughs> it is my oh, Aaron were to appearance, appearance wise, yes. Get caught, all of that would be turned on its head. Because you can't do a test. You can't do a test. I'm aware of that. Now, when you watch this next part, listen for any inconsistencies in what he said prior. When I went to the rehab, I went there for 28 days and I left, went back to Florida. Relapsed immediately. What was the relapse on? Was it huffing, huffing or was it something else? Okay. Huffing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Aaron said he relapsed on huffing as soon as he got out of rehab. But do you remember him saying this about a minute earlier? The last time you huffed. 
was last uh, right before you guys put me in rehab. But now he's saying the last time he did it, I didn't was even catch that. Rehab. If we were interviewing Aaron, we would ask him how he was able to kick that addiction because it surely seemed he wasn't going to be able to stop on his own cold turkey. Someone who relapses that quickly, right out of rehab surely has a major addiction and it's likely he's still secretly huffing now listen to what he says here absolutely mm -hmm. yeah that's my truth did you notice he says it's his truth and not the truth they're two very different things his truth is what he wants to believe and the truth is what's really going on the truth shall set you free and then he talks about the truth in a very disconnected way. Can you tell that's very disconnected from him with the word you? As opposed to him opening up about why he couldn't ever admit to huffing until now. This should have been a much more emotional moment of Aaron finally confessing to the doctors and to the world about one of the biggest battles of his life and finally being able to win and kick that terrible addiction. But there was none of that. Now, with these next few clips, see if you notice anything flawed with Aaron Carter's mindset, which could be contributing to his problems. Meaning, I don't care. I actually, I think you, if anything, you care too, too much. much. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not buying it. Proving to people that what you're saying about me isn't right and you're hurting. Please don't bully me. Like, why are you guys doing that to me? What did I ever do? to deserve that. It's always been my duty <laughs> to make everyone happy. Please, everybody. Why are you here? You're not even relevant. When I'm signed to Sony Records and I have 62 million streams, back-to-back, -back, huge, massive radio shows with 25, 30,000 people, it's never good enough. Everyone has some people who will just never like them. I mean, you know, even yours truly. <laughs> but the more famous you are, the greater the number of people who won't like you. Of it's course. just a pure fact. It's normal. No. That's what it Mother is. Teresa had haters. Yeah, she had a sizable group of haters who questioned her motives and her work. If St. Teresa of Calcutta could have haters, Aaron Carter, do you really think you won't have any haters? They're all causing me more stress by making fun of me. My weight goes up when I stop stressing. And when I start stressing, all hell breaks loose. I just get made fun of a lot for how I look. Some people just want to hate because it makes them feel better by bringing someone else down and it makes them feel less bad. I'm sorry, my fingers are too skinny. And you don't like the way they look. I just want to make everyone happy. There's a saying, all the heavens and all the hells are within you. Although we can't choose everything in life, we do get to choose how we perceive everything. Aaron is choosing the hells, but I challenge him to choose the heavens in life instead. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Aaron Carter needs help. Give this video a thumbs yes. up if you think he doesn't need help. He definitely need needs help. help. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. Yes, the boy needs help. We all know this. The things that supposedly happened to him, it's too much. Way too exaggerated. Come on, boy. There's gotta be some truth and all that, I'm pretty sure, because nobody's life is perfect. And I'm pretty sure bad things happen to everybody. But he is so caught up in the lies that he gives that it's, re it's, it's reality to him. Not only that, but he could have some type of mental disability. And if he's gotten checked, he's not telling anyone. But he's got something. It's that, the drugs, that both of them together, it doesn't juggle very well. So anyways, tell me what you think about Aaron Carter. I still like him because he's entertaining to me. I, I enjoy watching him. I enjoy watching the stuff that comes out of his mouth. He's interesting, an interesting human being. Still like the kid. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please turn on your notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload. And also please subscribe to Bliss and Press. That's my vlogging channel with my wife. See you in the next video. Peace.